can still remember what it was like the first time I stepped into a race car. The sound of the engine, the anticipation, but I never could have imagined where this journey would take me. My father once told me that racing is just like life. You have to stay on your toes because you never know what's around the next corner. Bill Watson, and this is my story. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. If you're an auto racing fan, when the calendar reads late May, there's only two venues you really want to be at. And since in the iRacing universe, planes don't fly and ships don't sail to Monaco, by process of elimination, your destination of choice has got to be Indianapolis, which is where we find ourselves today. From the historic Indianapolis Motor Speedway, it's the Global Sim Racing Channel's Round 10 coverage of the Batteries Not Included 2019 Spring Season Championship. It was a long time coming, but last round at Imola, Germany's Thomas Seeger finally picked up a well-deserved victory. Zavi Ross continued performing his impression of Sisyphus in high heels, making a job much harder than it needed to be. Nevertheless, the Spaniard remains very much in the championship conversation. And no shows again from Mark Usher and Antonio Paveda has any burning hopes of a championship for them now doused. All season long, the racing has been both exciting and strategic, and we expect nothing different today. And you can see all the simulated Williams FW31 road course action from Green Flag to Victory Donuts live as it happens right here on the iRacing Esports Network. Hello and welcome to another GSRC broadcast up in the broadcast booth to bring you our words eye view. Stefan Slocker joined by yours truly, Bill Soups on. Turning the knobs and pushing the sliders is our director, Sean Crackers Ambrose, armed with cameras locked and loaded by Dougie Beard. All right, Stefan, to be clear, we are at Indy, but we will be racing in a clockwise direction today, which means a road course. And Soup, contrary to real life track, this layout is like driving on ice. Some would even say this track still has character, unlike the new road course. You slip and slide, jump and bump, and if you're lucky, you're also really fast. The road course itself obviously isn't as old as the oval. Its life began in 2000. This, however, is the layout from 2007. 13 turns are located around its 2.5 miles, setting the car up is tricky as ever. Slow turns, medium speed turns and a full throttle portion of about 60% make exciting racing guaranteed. Even though the, full, uh, the, the long full throttle portion around the oval part, we still have a rather slow average of around 130 miles per hour. But let's take a few steps down the grandstand to the track and send you on board our GSRC lab guide. All right, we've got Scott Newton and the GSRC Williams, so let's do a lap around Indianapolis. 
Down the front stretch, this is by far the fastest part of the circuit. With the heavy braking into turn one, this is going to be the most popular spot to get a pass done. But this little chicane is slow enough that it requires some throttle modulation, and the overeager might find themselves facing the wrong way. Up into four, it's an awkward entry, making overtakes difficult. You'll blast through the kink of five, and then you've got the patience trying turn six. The unique thing about this hairpin is that you'll stay hugged tight to the inside to give yourself a better run onto the backstretch. But anyone who gets greedy and lets it swing out past the track boundaries will suffer a slowdown penalty. While you might sometimes see pass attempts down into eight, it's a swifter corner than you'd expect. This set of S's also tightens as you go, meaning staying on the racing line will be important to your lap time. Eventually, you'll reach the most critical corner of the track, turn 11. You won't be lifting from here to the line, so a good exit winds up having a big effect not just on your lap, but whether you can attack or defend. You don't even have to swing out wide to carry your speed through here. It's all about shortening the distance through the final bank turn by staying right down to the inside. But hopefully, if you've kept it all together, you've now finished a lap around Indianapolis. Joe Peak doing what he does so well, and that is taking and talking the viewers around a road course. This time it is the road course at Indy. Now, to help the viewers understand the championship race, GSRC is doing something unique. We're showing you both the best of eight point standings and the four drop net point standings. And depending on whether you're left or right handed, whoever you think is the point leader is very much up for debate. Let's go ahead and look at the best of eight points coming. Off the aforementioned win at Emila Thomas Seeger moves up to the top with 1,111 points. That's 72 ahead of Zavi Ross. Now you can see Danilo moved around Marco Sanfilippo. They swap positions. And then Tony Poveda is well back in fifth. Now note that, that it's Seeger up in front and Ross 72 back. Let's go ahead and look now at the four drop races. This is if you have to throw away your four worst events, who do you see on top? Look how it is different. Here it's Zavi Ross. Now the total is only 917 because he's not scored out on as many events. Notice where Zieger is. He's way down there in fifth, 158 points back. So I don't know, again, who's ahead? It's hard to say. It depends on, again, if you're left or right-handed, how you want to look at it. Half glass half full, glass half empty. Marco Sanfilippo is in second. Notice Mark Usher is in third. He's won every event he's raced in, but he's missed five of them. So that's why he's sitting so well. I don't know if there's enough time for him to get back up and be a threat for the championship now that he's actually scored on a zero race. That he throws away four no-shows, and then he has to score the one no-show that is extra. So there you have it. We'll see how that plays out. Your guess is as good as mine. You know, we'd like to know your opinion on that. So if you, who you like, who you think is ahead, let us know on on the YouTube chat and and uh, tell us what you think on that. Here's something much less ambiguous, though. Let's go ahead and have Stefan talk about the race details. Yeah, and after that complicated drop and no drop standings, I'm not going to complicate you with any fractions of the schedule today. It's round ten of twelve. Uh, as already mentioned, four drop weeks are handed out to these guys in the batteries not included championship. Uh, today's race length, 48 laps. They have to do pit stop, as always. Setups completely open. Incident camp, standard Ferrari racing, 17 incidents. We're not expecting anyone to run out of incidents today. And the points they award in the BNI championship are the official iRacing points. Talk about iRacing, the best of the best in the iRacing World Championships, as well as many of the top private leagues, like the one you're watching right now, are showcased right here on the iRacing Esports Network. If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you subscribe. You know, GSRC is proud to be part of the IESN stable of broadcasters. Let's take a quick look at the weather here in Indianapolis, see what it's going to do to the track. Steph? Oh, <laughs> this weather... It's hot and Ooh. heavy. 116 Fahrenheit on the track. We have partly cloudy skies, 81 Fahrenheit in the air. Winds, a bit unusual for Indianapolis, only 2 miles per hour from the north to northwest. Uh, humidity 44%, but keep an eye on the track temperature. That's going to propose quite some problems to the drivers out here today. Okay, Mom and Dad, we've done our homework. Can we please take a look at the action on the track? And they do. They say yes. So let's see who's here today. Well, the big names are here. Zavi Ross and Thomas Seeger is here. As practice no is still Mark going Usher. on. Oh, qualifying. Yeah, no Mark Usher. 
And as we look at this, am I, am I looking at this as qualifying done or am I? No, I miss reading this. There's still a little bit of time. Nope. Yeah. There we go. We have a lot of people putting in time. There's only one car out there on screen right now. Also here today, Antonio Paveda. Good for him. Not sure if he's still in the championship hunt, but he'll be a competitor for sure. Other names. I am Keeman is here. Fast, but uh, a bit erratic at times. And the car we're following here, Thomas Seen, I think that is pronounced, racing out of Pennsylvania. He's right now just putting in some practice laps. He already did his uh, put in his two laps, a 109.209, his fastest out of the two. Very small field here today. We have 15 drivers, and this is not a split. There's only one split. So I think maybe the iRacing Indy 500 that is going on probably sucked a little bit of the... the uh, attendance a little bit here but still a good field ah, look at that beautiful indianapolis skyline beautiful day to go racing very hot on track qualifying is done we're just waiting for that to wrap up a few more minutes before they actually grid up 15 cars here today 13 put in qualifying times mustafa erden and Michelle Ursel did not. Watch out for Ursel down there in the number 13. He will be quick. Yeah, and I think Erden has some problems because in the last few moments he disconnected and connected about three times so far. Okay, well, let's go to the grid right now. On the front row, let's take it a row at a time, uh, Stefan. I'll take Xavi Ross on the pole. He's going to be flanked by Marco Sanfilippo. Antoni Ortiz Pavida in uh, the second row alongside him, Thomas Tia. Told you to watch out for I.M. Keeman. He sits fifth. He's going to be inside of David Cudmore. Danilo Sanfilippo only down in seventh place. Alongside him will be the Spaniard of Ica Estefania. Lars Hung sits in ninth. He's going to be flanked by Stefan Stelstenpool. Thomas Seen just outside the top ten in eleventh. Alongside him, Midi Mokrani. That was Jan Stelstenpool, by the way, in the Baker's Dozen position. It is Jerry Horkholm. And in 14th is Mustafa Erden. And then the last car out there we talked about, Michelle Hussle not putting in a time. He is out on the track, though. So 14 drivers out there, each one inside. And Williams FW31. Engine start to harmonize. You know what to do. Green, green, green. Gather up the chickens, take cover behind the cows, because the. No! Are, oh, no! We have a bookmark of this one. We'll take a look at it. There was an incident on the very beginning. That was Poveda. Poveda on its roof. Yep. He is out of this race. Out in front, it is Zavi Ross. Marco Sanfilippo in second. Let me know. Let me change that. That's it's uh yeah, Marco Sanfilippo in second as my timing and scoring catches up. Danilo Sanfilippo at this point in time, 6th place, so he himself also, sorry, 5th place actually, so he himself gained about 3 positions, uh, 2 positions off the start. And it was the driver from from 3rd with a great start from uh, Antonio Paveda, he was out in 3rd position with the car just went left on him, he put it on the wall, and it goes over. We'll come back and take a look at that one a little bit later when the action allows, they work their way... <laughs> through the oval corner number one now back out onto the main section it's the final corner they're going to come across completing the first lap it is Zavi Ross Marco Sanvilippo behind him and Thomas Seeger in third oh and I am Keeman had a weird coming uh, together with Thomas uh, Poveda. Poveda is still upside down on the track his his real wheel his real winds are spinning As the leaders go by, hopefully Antonio is and okay. To, to, to finish up on it, I am Keeman. Uh, he's right now, he went into pit lane weirdly enough. I don't know what happened there. Just out of the last turn, he started to break on the racing line to get into the pit lane. Um, and he got collected by Thomas Seen. No damage to his car, but I am Keeman crabbing really hard right now down the pit lane. And he just disconnected. He's done. 
go ahead and look at we're gonna look at this battle here for fourth position a good run from Danella Filippo as he gets a run on David Cudmore I think he has the momentum to get this done Cudmore takes the defensive line down into but it's not going to be enough. I think that San Filippo is going to be able to finish the job on the outside. Let's see if he cuts it down in there. No. And he does get it done. So move Danello up into fourth. Actor Estefania in the sixth position. Lars Hung in seventh. And seems like Thomas Sin actually has retained quite some damage from the contact with I'm Kimen, so he's now into pit lane, also crapping himself. So that is already four cars that are pretty much out of this race. With a small field to start and then attrition early on, opportunity for drivers to vulture several spots. Up in front, it is Zavi Ross. Coming across, he's going to get credit with leading lap number three as well as he's led from the start. Marco Sanfilippo about a second behind him. All right, now, as the action settles down on the track, let's go ahead and take a look at the replay. From the start, now this in involved Antonio Paveda, who was gridded in third position. You'll see him on the outside there to the uh, on the left. Third car on screen left. And there you, you see that it just veers to the left. It goes into the outside wall, comes back across. Not sure if anyone got a piece of him. We go on board. Yeah, that is. On, on the upshift, he just loses the car on the spinning wheels and who is that car that collected him that was i'm key man so he already had damage from there we ride on board with i am see if we can take a look at it. here we go also david cutmore got uh, the rear wheel in his face there here we go and you see that they get the grid yep and he gets a piece of it so why we were gone we're not missing anything. Ross, San Filippo, and Seeger still racing one, two, three. Yeah, but nice little Danilo's... battle for fifth. Yeah. Uh, Danilo San Filippo is not ca is actually not catching the top oh. three guys, so he's running away from the guys behind. That is uh, David Cutmore and Ika Estefania, but uh, yeah. He's running away from these two guys, but as I said, not catching the guys ahead, so he might find himself in pretty much no man's land soon. Little by little, Estefania in the number six car racing in sixth position has been closing in on the back of Cudmore. Honestly, it's going to take me a little time to get to wrap my head around how things really are here as we've lost so many big name drivers. Keeman is out, Paveda is out. I expected them to be racing up front. Let's drop back a little bit farther and look at this battle for 8th. This involves Jan Stelen Steltenpool. Here comes a run. Now, we thought that Usel would be good, and it took him a while. I think he's going to get this pass made. He has a great run out of the final corner. He's going to duck to the inside, get this pass made, going into 1. There you have it. Stops it on the dime. Make the pass happen. He is now in 8th place. A uh, great pass by Michel Usel there. He's got about six seconds to get up to Hung, who races in seventh. Back half of your drivers there. Mukrani in tenth position all by himself. There you see Usel coming at you. Eleven uh, cars on the track right now. Go ahead, Steph. Just a quick update on Thomas uh, Thomas Seen. Uh, I did count him out a little bit too fast. He is still racing in twelfth place, but he is about to get lapped in probably about a few laps. Oh, good for you. I said eleven, but I guess he did come back out there. I counted him out as well. All right, we ride on board with the driver in second. This is uh, 
the Markle version of the San Filippo brothers. You know, Zeger's coming on him. Little by little, he is coming, but there's still quite a gap between the two. And passing is going to be hard here. You have the fast straight down into turn one. But apart from that, you have this backstretch, and that's already pretty much sealed the deal. Not only because um, how this layout plays out, but also because of how short it is. It is for road course, very short. Even for a Formula One track, it is very short. So passing opportunities, they are not plentiful, but they are gonna come at you very fast. Interesting enough, as we look at the driver in third, Ross really has been able to drive away from San Filippo. He's been able to hang in there. San Filippo back by about a second and a half. Zieger close enough in there as well, back by about a second from San Filippo. Let's drop back and take a look at fifth position. And about another second separating these two guys. This is Cudmore. S and Estefania. And how about Lars Hung back there in seventh, hanging in there as well? Yeah, Estefania, he's making it a little bit hard on himself. As already mentioned in the pre show, uh, pre race show, it is hard to set up the car and it's easy to make mistakes here because of how low grip this track is. And Iker Estefania is proving exactly that he's making little mistakes every now and then. Thus, he is not able to keep up with David Cutmore, who keeps it steady, keeps it running, keeps it on this gray stuff, pointing forward. And as long as he does it, Iker Stefani will have a little bit of problem overtaking him because, yes, he is faster, but he's also making the mistakes. Good battle going on there. Let's check in on car number 12, Thomas Seen. He just got lapped by... Zave Ross, and now it won't be long. This will be a little more interesting. Ross caught, uh, caught sign right on the uh, straightaway, had no problem. I think maybe San Filippo and, and Seeker might catch him at a different part of the track. There you see Thomas. Got caught up in the incident early on. Day is not going quite the way he is expected. They might get lucky as well, as it looks like he's going to be able to stay in front through this little twisty section here. When they get back out onto the oval, they might be able to make the pass without much of a problem. One more corner sends them back out onto the oval section, and sure enough, no problem here. And in fact, it may actually work out for San Filippo, so he'll get a bit of a toe. Whee! The gap, though, now has to Ross has opened up to 2.3 seconds. Seeger so back in third. He'll need to separate. He'll need to work on a sign as well. Yeah, and and Seeger's actually quite close now to a scene, so that might actually pose some problems right now and getting held yeah. up a little bit through the Omega already. Now let's see if it makes room for Tiger to pass down the back stretch. There you see San Filippo oh! on screen and then those two in the back. Yep. Woo. Thomas seen there lifting off the throttle quite heavily. Yeah. <laughs> and Seeger said, okay, I guess you want me to go, so he went. We'll take a quick look at this one. Seeger in the kind of charcoal color machine. It does seem like that Seeger didn't really expect that. Uh, so, yeah, he really made a very late yeah. move there. Come back live on the German driver. Lost himself about 7 tenths up to San Filippo behind Thomas Zin. So, yeah, he has to work up again. I think the gap is now up to about a second between the two. So he has to work, he still has to draft, but he has to work back up to try to challenge Marco Sanfilippo for that P2. 
So what you have is the three drivers up in front in a bit of a battle. That's Ross, Sanfilippo, and Seeger. Then you got a driver all by himself, Danilo Sanfilippo. Then we go back to this battle we're looking at. This is really a three-car battle. It has Cudmore involved in it. It depends on how fast Estefania is, whether it's a three-car or two-car battle. Right now, Estefania is a little bit behind. Lars Hung doing a great job of sticking on the back of Estefania. Yeah, guess what? The last lap from Estefania, 108.9 compared to a 109.6 of Lars Hung. And Ika Estefania once again turned four, made a big mistake, he lost himself a second up to Cutmore, and he's right on the back, uh, right in front of Lars Hung again. So yeah. Ika Estefania really has to pick up stop slacking around, especially in turn four, or he's gonna get under pressure from Lars Hung, who tries to look on the inside, it lifts again, does not want to do it. So he stays for now in P6. I've had the pleasure of watching Hung race for quite a while now. He's a very, very conservative driver. If the opportunity is there, he will take it, but he does not like to force the issue. He prides himself on doing something, racing very clean, keeping the car pointed in the right direction. We've been jumping around a little bit, so it's fun to stay right here and take a look at this one. You can see some of the interesting different racing lines that Hung was trying to employ there, and he loses a little bit of time on the exit out of that final right-hander. Looks like he's close enough here to take another shot at it if he wants it to get into the toe and make a stab down into the first corner. They come back out onto the oval. The interval just half a second back. You'll be able to see Hung gather him up. Might be too far back to get there before that first corner. Closing now in the toe, knocking off tenths of a second, but going to be too far back to make the stab. These drivers battle for sixth. Both up two positions. They started eighth and ninth, respectively. Positions that they made were this vultured from the problems from I.M. Keeman and Antonio Paveda, who are both out of the race. Uh-oh. On That's the sick. outside was Thomas Seen there, yeah. who spun himself through the Omega. One easy mistake to make. A little bit too fast at the entry. You have to break too much through the Omega and around. She goes, no armor foul. Uh, Lars Sung, the very close on the back now of Iker Stefania and that might actually pose some problems for him into turn one. Much closer than he was last lap. Only three car lanes back, now two car lanes back. He has a lot of momentum. If he wants the pass, he can have it. Actually, he's getting to him too fast as he gets to him into the corner. He moves to the outside. Now let's see if there's enough straight line speed from that car on the outside line. Or did he use up all of his stuff? Yeah, it kind of stalls. The defensive line from Estefania, and Hung's not going to be able to get the pass made. Actually, I honestly think he got there too fast as he caught up behind him in the corner. Had to pull out too soon and lost all of his steam. Not only that, but it also seems like Lars Hung is racing quite some considerable amount more downforce than Iker Estefania because Lars Hung uh, also did lose out on the straight line on the top. Yep speed compared to Iker Stefania who had a higher top speed and actually was able to uh, pull clean of Lars Hung into turn one. Our director found another battle we can go to. Let's drop back to ninth position. This is Mukrani in a battle with the Stelton Pool. Mukrani in the white car. Stelton Pool in the oh, Lord help me. It's got to be red. Yeah, thank you. Got one right. And you were able to see it on top of your screen. Xavier Ross with another fastest lap at 107.719. About three tenths faster yet again than Marcus and Filippo. And it, it comes a little bit down to Groundhog Day, but at this point, I'm a tiny bit surprised that Xavier Ross is able to keep up this pace and not make a single mistake so far. <laughs> it really is. If you've been following this series all season long, you know that uh, don't leave yet, because Zave Ross is not immune to making a mistake often while he is leading. 
Someone who just made a mistake was Cherry Forkop. You were able to see it on the right side of your screen. He pinned it out onto the oval, crawls back onto the pit lane now. He was racing in 11th position, I believe it was the last car out there. There we were able to see the aftermath. And there we go, just on the throttle. And there she goes around now. Coming in through the pit box, probably in his window, although I think he has called it a day. He climbed out of his car and retired it, yep. so that leaves now only 11 drivers to race. Three of those we've been covering up in front. Ross, San Filippo, and Seeger. Seeger now about five seconds behind Ross. Nobody in contention has made a scheduled pit stop yet. And, and clearly, I yeah, I think you nailed it, Stephen, <laughs> when you talked about the setup on, on Hung's car. Look at this. He gathers him up as a mistake from Estefania. Another mistake from Estefania. And here he comes once again down the uh, turn two entrance to go now down to turn one off the oval, obviously. Uh, the last corner there of this road tra uh, course. And let's see on that top speed. There you can see now he stalls out and now Got Iker him. doesn't start to pull because Iker spots him behind. Very interesting. He sure did. As a cloud rolls over Indianapolis now, puts uh, the track under shade. Hung clearly racing with a lot of downforce. Which kind of falls into his strategy of just keeping the car pointed in the right direction. Alright, here's his other battle back here. Yeah, nothing Still has changed. Oh, there's a mistake right in front of him for Muk Mukrani, but let's see if Stelton Pool capitalizes on it. He's not going to. You can see how trenchily these two are racing here. If you really don't know much about setting up a car, especially a F1 car, you are going to struggle here. Four grip, four speed for pretty much anything that you find valuable about a racing a car on a track. And these two are showing that, but you still can produce some great racing, especially down in the order if you find someone else, as these two are proving currently on the track. One of the nice things is when the event doesn't split, we get to see all the drivers, and we get to see some of the drivers that here that we usually don't see, like Mukrani and, and Stelton Poole. Welcome to the broadcast. Mukrani's got to be saying when he watches this on the rebroadcast when the race is over. And you had the camera on me for 30 seconds. You caught my one mistake. Nice recovery, though. Work in lap number 18, 19. We'll drop in on the driver in third position. Again, depending on your point of view, he could be your points leader. Closing in on Marco Sanfilippo. Yeah, and the thing is, both of them start to make mistakes. We're already we're already on lap 19 of this motor race, about 22, 20, or uh, sorry, about 20 la uh, minutes into this race already. Um, so we are not all that far away from the halfway point, which is lap 24. And these guys are already starting to struggle with their tires because of how low grip this is. You really need to treat your tires good here, so you have the valuable stuff at the end still so he can push someone and Thomas Seeger seems to have more in his back pocket right now than the uh, driver of Marco Sanfilippo. Both these guys losing touch with Ross is really picking him up and putting him down right now. 
You know, both the San Filippo boys, the season has really come around for these guys. Early on, they were racing uh, outside of the top five, but as of late, they've been very competitive. Yeah, let's not forget about the Nürburgring, where Danilo Sanfilippo was even racing outside of the top 10. So he really made a recovery, especially yeah. last round at Demola. Closest battle out there for second, Sanfilippo and Seeger. They both need to make a stop, as does everybody else. Let's go ahead and check in on sixth position. Update you here. Once Hung got around uh, Estefania, Lars was able to drive away. Estefania kind of surrendered that spot going down into the first corner. He must have been able to read the writing on the wall and said, okay, go around me. Makes me wonder if Eco Estefania also has some uh, underfloor damage because of his many mistakes so far and the excursions into the green stuff here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway because he really is starting to struggle not only for lap time speed but also a little bit for his top speed of which he lost about 2-3 miles per hour since the last check. Let's check in on second position. They're coming up on some lap traffic. They were just able to negotiate around McCrony who races in 10th. Next up for them is Steldenpool. Now, Steldenpool did a good job of getting out of the way of Ross. Jan pulled the car over, and there was no problem there. But now they're going to be a little different of the story because San Filippo and Ziger are in a battle. They are coming on him, though. I thought for a second Marcus San Filippo is going to go into pit lane. They're coming up on him though right now on the straight, but I think they're not close enough for Steltonpool to let them by, so nope. that might happen through the Omega. They go into the first corner. Maybe they'll catch him on the back stretch, but no, nope, they're going to catch him right now. Still, look at this. Nice job. Well done. He's able to let those guys go by, and he's still able to keep his gap on Mukrani. That's how you do it. Tip of the hat to Jan Steltenpool there. Nice back marker work. Oh, and I just saw it. Thomas Seen once again. A little spin for him. No harm, no foul. Way away from everyone else right now. A lap down. Coming to two laps down as Saviros closes in on him with 107.4 for him on the last time. To compare that. Ooh. Seems like San Filippo yeah. made a mistake yeah. there. They come back out. San Filippo makes a little mistake. That brings Seeger in now. Seeger's got to run. I think he's too far back to make a stab. It's going to be a late move as ever. Think so? He's going to have to dive it in deeper. Look at the defensive line. I think you're right, Stefan. The defensive line from San Filippo. Seeger now to the outside. Cannot finish the job, but he made a stab. And just behind these guys, as San Filippo and Seeger were going into the first corner, Selden Pool wrecked it on the front straight. There he is. That looked like a little bit of uh, tension failure. Made him crummy, really lucky there. But yeah, he just didn't turn enough and then stopped turning nearly completely and clatters that wall as if it was Ralph Schumacher. Yeah. All right, we come back live, so we lose another driver out there. All this going on behind Xavi Ross. The good news for Ross is, as the attrition continues, there's less lap cars for him to deal with. And to quickly finish up on the point that I wanted to make between San Filippo and uh, Xavi Ross, Xavi Ross still pulls about four to six tenths on uh, the battle between San Filippo and Seeger and himself. So, Xavi Ross, so far, so clean, so fast. Seven cars on the lead lap. We'll go back and look at uh, Marco San Filippo. This is the best battle out here. Seeger is faster. He's made mistakes. He's able to run him down. 
Made a stab the last lap in the first corner. Wasn't able to get it done. And in case you were wondering, what does he mean with Ralf Schumacher? Well, just Google Indianapolis Ralf Schumacher 2004 and 2005, where he crashed twice due to tire failures <clears throat> uh, because of the nature of this track. Um, as Xavier Ross actually pits now. Yeah, we're going to have a new leader here, I think. As Marco Sanfilippo is going to go by and inherit the lead. Seeger stays out there as well. Sanfilippo comes in. Ross's stall all the way at the very end. He's a long drive down. And he's going to find his box. It'll be the very last one right behind the pace car. Goes up on the jacks. That beautiful black and gold machine. And he comes out. Cycling out into fifth position. Right ahead of Iker Stefania. Boy, this is good news for Ross. He got lucky there. He came out just ahead of Iker and he doesn't have to deal with making the pass. So now, San Filippo and Seeger battle for the lead. There are no bonus points for leading a lap in this series. I said Seeger was too far back to make a stab last time. I was proven wrong. This time I feel comfortable in saying that he is. But he does close up. Quick note, Lars Hong just also took his pit stop. He now cycled out in eighth place. Oh! Oh, big slide from Seeger. Holy mother of slides. Yeah, my God, he caught it. Woo! Great job. Those hands were quick. You don't often see that in these cars. Uh, a lot of times when they get loose, they're, they're gone. Well caught. Might be time for pit stops here as now that uh, Ross is out there on fresh rubber, he's going to be quick. Not able to put in a qualifying fine was Michelle Usel, but he comes in for a stop. He's worked his way up from 14th into 7th position. He misses his pit box. He has to roll back. Lars Hung goes by Usel. Both those drivers making stops. Boy, look at this. San Filippo stays out again. I'm almost thinking if I was Thomas, I might want to come in. Or st maybe he's thinking I'll stay out. Maybe he'll do the overcut. Well, you know, this is one of the tracks where I would actually be thinking and testing out to do a two-stopper because of how you have to treat your tires to actually be fast. But I'm not sure if that's a viable option in a 40-minute race. Yeah. Not quite at the halfway mark. Oh, no, we're past the halfway mark, actually. We can lap number 27, 22 to go. And Marcus Anfilippo comes into pit lane. Thomas Seeger stays out. So, new leader, All right. Thomas Seeger. He is going to try the overcut. What would be your prediction about an outlap on fresh, on new tires that are cold? Is that... Uh, with a hot track, is that going to be tricky, Stefan, or not so much? Um, outlap on this track always is tricky because of how low grip the surface is. Um, obviously, with the high temperatures, it is going to be more tricky, so you have to be a little bit changer uh, when applying the throttle for the first one to two laps. So this is going to be interesting. The San Filippo now has a little bit of an issue. The question is, will Zieger be faster on old tires on this lap, nobody in front of him, than Marco Sanfilippo will be on new tires? Yeah, and the mistake from Marco Sanfilippo might actually be what puts the time out for Thomas Zieger. He goes again yeah. past the pit entrance. 
As he blinks away now, we get him back. He's going to run some hot laps right now. Got to be careful because after a while, those tires are going to heat up for San Filippo, and he's just going to be faster. Here comes uh, Danilo. He was racing in a fourth position. So with Danilo San Filippo pitting, he was the second last car to pit. So Thomas Seeger, your only car that still remains to pit. Ross cycles back now. Waiting for Danilo to roll out. Gotta worry that Thomas has stayed out one too many laps here. Let's see as he comes through the second last turn. Will Thomas Tiga pit in? And no, wow. once again he goes past. So let's go ahead and look at their last lap times. Zieger put in a 1077. Marco put in. Well, I'm not getting because they're still. Yeah, they're still trying to get out laps, so it's really not really getting a good time. Yeah, Thomas Zieger with a 107.784 uh, and now 108.472 as Marco Sanfilippo gets there into you go. the last turn now. Let's see, goes past the score tower. He comes over the bricks and it's a 108.073. Okay. So, uh, last lap was faster, but because Thomas Seeger made a little mistake, he lost those four tenths. It's going to be interesting when Seeger does decide to come in. A couple cars, one lap down. This is a stunt. It's uh, Estefania and Hung. That is happening just behind our current leader who decided once again to go past pit entry. So he's also leading a lap 30 of this motor race. If you thought you watched this battle before, you had. Remember, it was not long ago we saw Estefania just kind of move over and wave Lars by. You look at pit stop times, Estefania was really quick. Actually, Hung was pretty well as well. They're about equal times there. Meanwhile, our leader stays out. He is working lap number 31. Just lapped Thomas Seen for the second time. Yep. So, Thomas Seen now two laps down, but for how long? That is the question as Thomas Tigo comes out of the second last turn for the 31st time. And this time, though, no more fuel on board. He Come comes in. in pit lane. All right, let's leave the battle we're looking at. Let's pick up Marco Sanfilippo as we see Zeke coming in. Marco on the back straight. Zeger looking to find his box. We'll cover both of these guys. Sanfilippo working through the twisty section. Through that final right-hander now, coming back out onto the oval. Thomas Tiger coming to his pit stall now. Does he miss it? No, he does not. So that's a point towards Thomas Tiger. Goes yep. off the tracks, off the pit he goes. Long pit lane still up to the cones. He goes off the pit limiter. Where is Marcus and Filippo? There he is in the background. Thomas Tiger goes up in front of And that's how you do the overcut. Now let's see what those new tires, if he can get them warmed up. If Marco Sanfilippo is going to make the pass, this would be the time he wants to do it. Each corner, Seeger is going to feel more comfortable on the rubber he has underneath him. And we expect that Seeger was going to be faster as a rule. He was be able to stay behind Sanfilippo the whole time. Made a couple stabs, he was just waiting, and now he's out of trouble. We'll see if he can drive away. Quite a distance between 
Seeger and the leader. And yes, the German driver now out of front. So Ross and Seeger sitting 1-2. If you talk about the best eight scores, Seeger is your points leader. If you talk about drop races accounted for, Zave Ross is your point leader. Like my mom said, it'll all come out in the wash as we get closer to the very end of this series. Right on board with San Filippo. Seeker's got to be feeling every point is important. A, a pass by San Filippo could be the championship between Seeker and Ross. Not to mention that San Filippo is also still in the hunt. When you take drop races into account, he's even closer to Ross than, than, than uh, Seeger is. So, no surprise to see all the drivers who are up in the points racing one, two, and three. Let's go to Hung back here looking on the back of uh, Estefania. I think we got a shot at it here, although we know that Lars Hung is very, very conservative. He will not force the issue. Yeah, Boy, he's but... like your soft core Kimi Raikkonen in this in this series. <laughs> Kimi Raikkonen known for not pushing the issue, but Lars Hung even less pushing the issue. Um. <sighs> Taking the, the... Considering the driver in the 10 car's name I just I just the opportunity this is low-hanging fruit for me so I will just move along no you, you can hang it out there <laughs> stop <laughs> okay, here we go great run here from Estefania and hung and in oh. your scene you can see the yeah. Thomas scene once again in the kitty litter Seed is the man on the scene that's racing. He only seems to be in our camera. Off track as uh, some of the cars on the lead lap go by. Stay out there, Thomas. You're not causing any trouble. Just keep swimming, baby. So we're looking at these two battles. This battle going on right now for what would be uh, sixth position, and then the other one between Ziger and Estefania. I'm sorry, and uh, San Filippo. And I really think that Thomas Ziger has that one in unless he makes a mistake. This one, I think, really is just a matter of time before Hung decides to make this pass. Hung, the last car on the lead lap. There are only seven. Ten cars are racing. Thomasine's going to pull in for a pit stop. I'm not sure if he's calling it a day or maybe he wants to see if he can get a little more work done on the car. Go back up and look at our leader, Zave Ross. The Global Sim Racing Channel's round 10 coverage of the Batteries Not Included 2019 Spring Season Championship. And you might be looking at your future champion here, Zave Ross. And in behind in P2, or for the battle for P2, uh, Thomas Tiger is starting to ever so slightly creep away from Marcus and Filippo last lap, two tenths in favor of Thomas Tiga. As we leave Ross and go back, look at that battle for a second. Let's give a tip of the hat to Zave, who has not had uh, his Achilles heel flare up on him today. He has been relatively perfect out there. I don't mean to jinx him. We still have 13 laps to go. And you're right. The German driver beginning to pull away from the Italian driver, Seeger. Now up by almost a second on Marco Sanfilippo. As is so often the case, the Sanfilippo brothers sit close to each other in the timing and scoring. Danello in fourth.
There's Marco, and you can see the gap 20 seconds back to Danilo. It's been a quiet race for Danilo. He's really been in fourth position with nobody around him the entire time. Give him a little screen time. He's going to be coming up behind somebody that we've seen a lot of time, mostly in the grass, and that is Thomas C. Let's stay on this for a minute, and we'll see... Uh, a scene does getting out of the way of Danilo. Scene just took another pit stop. That would be his second of the day. I think he went in for a little extra repairs. I think his first one was for repairs, and it was super early. Ah. So Thomas, uh, Thomas Scene, probably having to pit in now for the fuel required to go to the end. You know, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what happened. Good call. All right, let's see if Danello can get there before corner number one. Might be too far back, but let's see how much straight line speed he has or if Cena's going to lift for him. Not going to get there this time. Stay on this a bit more because Cena has been a bit of a exciting driver today. So let's make sure that Danello gets this done. There we go. So Danilo comfortably now around that back marker, still racing in fourth. All right, we go back in and look at this one. On the outside is Hung making an attack on Estefania. We saw Estefania surrender this position earlier. Ah, that was when there was a lot more racing to go. When there's only 11 to go, Iker a little more determined to hang on to that spot. Best battle on the track. We can stay here. Go, Steph. Eker, like Casillas, saves the ball, saves the position, stays in sixth place. Like a goalie, he defends his P6 with his life. What can Lars Hung do? Seems like he is the fastest yeah. car. Uh, he just has too much downforce, can't get uh, fast enough up to turn one to actually make something happen to uh, against Eker. But I think it's only a question of time when it will happen, that overtake. Yeah, he's closer this time than he was last time. He's going to get right up behind him again. Going to swing out of this final corner. He's got a good run. The defensive line from Eker now. They go side by side. This is where Hung's car will stall. We saw that uh, Estefania surrendered the spot earlier. And again, he defends on the inside line. No problem for Hung, though, as that car is well stuck to the ground. If this would be real life racing, Lars Hung would already be hung out there because of how little aggression he shows in overtaking someone. You know, he's really close here. He might have a shot. If he can get a good drive off of here, there might be enough time for him to make a stab into this one. Nope, I don't think so. But again, he's closer even than last lap. He backs off a bit so he can get a good run through here. Hung so much better through the technical section. A bit of a mistake from Eker this time. Boy, he is really on his gearbox now. Here he comes. He's going to get a good run. He's going to catch him right in the corner this time. Coming up on him. He actually may catch him a little bit too soon. He swings to the outside. No way that Eker is going to let him get to driver right. And actually, he did get there too soon, so he Hung has to tuck back in. Now let's see if he forces the issue under braking. Nope, that is not Hung's motive. If he would have stayed with Eker there going to the outside, he would have had to run again. But Lars Hung just stays on the inside there and doesn't do anything with the opportunity given to him because Eker said, now you're not going to catch me. You're not going to do anything, and that's exactly what Lars Hung did. It really is interesting because if, if Hung gets a really good run coming back out onto the oval, he catches he catches uh, Estefania in what is corner number one on the oval, and he has to wait. He has to time it so he gets up on the gearbox and he can sling out just as they come out of the final corner. Watch it one more time because it's fascinating. This time hung though a little farther back, not going to happen. 
Don't worry though, he still has eight more laps to run him down and make a stab. You know, he might not actually have to make the pass. Next time it has to be interesting to see. I guess he has never really got credit for leading at the at the start finish line. point I'm trying to make is maybe he could make the pass coming out of uh, the final corner and slingshot him right at the line. Don't have to worry about doing it down into corner number one. Not missing anything up front. This is Zave. He is comfortable. Eight seconds. He indeed is comfortable, but he is running up to the battle that we just left between Lars Hung and Ika Estefania. Yeah. Kind of hard to judge how long it'll be before he gets there. Estefania has pretty good pace, and I'm not really sure how hard uh, Zave needs to push to get there with an eight-second gap. Well, he is about two seconds faster than these two guys. Really? So I'm expecting him to be there in about three, four laps time. interesting here probably be more interesting if I didn't realize what a polite driver hung was I, I don't think he'll really put up much of a fight let's go up to hung now as he, he's closing in here as they work through the back straight six laps to go Alright, now this is where Hung is strong. He goes through this technical section. He needs to be close enough to be in the toe, but not so close that he catches up onto the back of Estefania through these, the right-hander here. This one looks pretty good. This one looks real good. Should be able to swing out here on the straight. This is his best position. He actually may lead at the line. He does not. But now they are side by side. They almost touch. Lars, you're going to have to force the issue. Try it under braking. You're good. Pin him down to the inside. He will not do it. Boy, that's an exciting racing, though. And what I talked about, maybe being able to pass him at the line. Estefania led the lap, but it was only by one one-hundredth of a second. And because, because of the fight they had into turn one, uh, Tsai Ross is already getting quite close. You can see him hit there in the background of these shots when we fill them from the front. Uh, and Tsai Ross is already probably in blue flag territory for yeah. these two guys. You guys just, you have my permission to ignore the blue flag. But right now, boy, the gap opens up. Estefania comfortably going to lead this lap. Zave Ross with the 7.3 second cushion back to Seeger. We haven't shown you much of that Seeger's San Filippo battle, but once Seeger got around him, he was able to drive away. <laughs> Eight second gap. Zave gets the pass. Oh, our side's gone. Lars Hunk, too polite, goes all the way to the outside there for Xaviros because of that, has two tires on the grass and on the throttle application, spins it around. Yep, and that's what it was. It was all about being polite. Boy, he had a hard time getting the car back out on track too. When he brings it back, he spins it a couple times. Yeah, so they... The bad news for Hung is he, he's now out of the competition with uh, Estefania. The good news is he did not lose a position. Interesting, though, he only has about a second on uh, Michelle Usel. So we'll see if Usel can run him down. I don't think so. We look at our leader, Zave Ross. As he has got around Estefania now, so clear track ahead for the Spaniard.
Spain, Germany, Italy, your top three nations. Let's put the camera on fifth position. Have not given a lot of love to the Canadian, David Cudmore. Started in six, up one spot. It has been a very quiet race for David. That's how Canadians like it sometimes, right? Just not causing any trouble, because out there doing his job. Good ride on board with Cudmore. You can see he's almost a full minute behind the leader. And that's Zavi Ross, who's going to be coming across the line right now. Two to go. The small field kept the excitement at a minimum. But the intrigue and the points is still very, very much in play. As your top three in the points, Ross, Seeger, and San Filippo. All finished well up. And that was Mokrani going down a second lap. So we now to have two cars, two laps down. That's Mili Mokrani and Thomas Sin. Uh, ten cars still remain on the racetrack. And five cars in total remain on the lead lap. With David Cudmore being the last of those five. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. If you're a fan of open wheel driving, open wheel racing, make sure you check in with us later tonight as GSRC will be covering a full length Indy 500 in the majors. White flag for Zavi Ross. Final lap for Ross. <laughs> and just for fun, he has a little bit of a squiggle there on his final lap. Come on, Zavi. You've kept it clean the whole way. Probably one of your best races this season. Just a few more corners to go. Dominant and clean leading from uh, wire to wire. Zavi Ross really, truly did put up the show yep. today. Final technical section here to go. The sharp is right-handed now. It'll ease him back out onto the oval. We are at the Brickyard. Round number 10 of the Batteries Not Included 2019 Spring Season Championship goes to Zavi Ross. Thomas Zeger out of the final corner will get second. Well ahead of Marco Sanfilippo. His brother Danello coming out onto the oval right now. A very quiet fourth for him. There's the second Italian driver. Go, Seth. After Danilo overtook David Cutmore for the P4, he was gone from them, not able to keep up with the speed. The top three showed so Danilo Sanfilippo finishes in no man's land in fourth position. Same with David Cutmore down in fifth place. The racing is over here at Indianapolis, but our broadcast is far from done. We'll take a short break. We'll come back to run down the entire finishing order. Talk to a few of the drivers before we put a lock on the gate. Don't go far. You're watching GSRC on IESN.
from the historic international of the <laughs> Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's the Global Sim Racing Channel's Round 10 coverage of the Batteries Not Included 2019 Spring Season Championship. The results are in. Let's give them to you right now. 15 drivers took to the grid. Six of them, five of them finished on the lead lap. They were Zavi Ross, who was first to do it. Thomas Seeger comes home in second. The San Filippo brothers, Marco and Danilo, go third and fourth. David Cudmore, the Canadian, is the last car on the lead lap in fifth. The next five is Eker Estefania, as he comes in sixth position, able to hold off Lars Hung, who spun there late in the race, who has to settle for seventh. Michelle Usel goes from 14th up into eighth. Ninth position is Mitty McCrani and Thomas Sane. We saw him race a lot. He's in 10th. Steph, who's the rest of the guys? Well, the rest of the guys all have a DNF to their name. Jan Steltenpool in 11th, Joe Falkop 12th, I am Keyman 13th, Antonio Ortiz Poveda ranking out, not even getting to turn one down in 14th, and Mustafa, and after internet connection issues, he did not take the green flag today. And we have nobody in our interview booth, so what we'll do is just wrap it up here today. We'd like to thank everyone in the Williams community for making this possible, especially Clayton McLeod for organizing the series of contracting with GSRC to broadcast. And on the screen now are some of the companies that provide software and hardware GSRC uses to stream cyberspace into your place. Additional thanks to June Lalonde who provides our wonderful music. See the screen to get a hold of more of her great work. The battery's not included returns in one week. That'll be round 11 from Monza. GSRC and iRacing will be there. We hope that you join us. If you haven't done so yet, visit us at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. We're also on social media, Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. All the upcoming races for our other series are listed on your screen, so check them out and mark them down on your calendar so you don't miss another second of exciting racing. Also, if you haven't done so yet, become a YouTube subscriber by heading over to our YouTube page and clicking that big red button. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, that would be Stefan, Sean, and Dougie. I'd like to thank all of you for watching, as it was indeed the Spaniard, Xavi Ross, picking up another win and getting a little closer to that championship here at Indianapolis. With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.